Okay, wait for it. Ouch. Right, so you can store a hell of a lot of energy in a spring. In this case, it's elastic, but a spring and a piece of elastic are very similar. So let's have a look at how energy is stored in a spring and how we can calculate it. Okay, so let's have a quick reminder of what Hooke's Law is. Okay, Hooke's Law basically says you get your spring, you add a, add a force to it, right? Uh, you get a certain amount of extension. If you double the force, you double the extension. In other words, force is proportional to extension. Okay, that's an E for an extension. If you look at this on the graph, it's a straight line. Okay, increase the force by a certain amount. If you double it, so let's say that's a force of 1. If we go to a force of 2, which would be about here, right, then you have doubled the extension. So whatever the extension was here, this value is twice that value because you doubled the force. Okay, so that's what Hooke's Law is, what Hooke's Law states. That's what you should be familiar with. Um, you should also be familiar with the fact that a, a gradient like this would represent a spring which has a uh, which is stiffer. Okay, so now we have to start thinking about that constant that comes in. So let's think about uh, if force is proportional to extension, we can also write this as an equal sign if we put a constant in there. Okay, um, the constant would be the gradient of the graph. Gradient is the change in the y divided by the change in the x. The y in this case is force, the x in this case is extension, and we're saying that that's going to be equal to the constant, so k will be equal to f over extension here, which is going to be an e. <coughs> so that's actually Hooke's law as well, which often gets written like this, f is equal to ke. Okay, so um, let's think about our stiffer spring here. What we're saying for the stiffer spring is, well, it's obviously got a steeper gradient, but two newtons provide, gave us a stretch or an extension of this much, okay? And two newtons for this other spring, so spring A gave us just this small amount of stretch, but spring B here, we got much more stretch, right? Uh, for the same two newtons. The constant essentially tells you how many newtons per meter of extension you get. So two newtons would give you not very much extension in this case. So this would be, uh, this might take a thousand newtons per meter, whereas this one might only take 500 newtons per meter. Okay, and hence its stiffness is less. So that's a quick recap of what Hooke's Law is. Now let's have a think about how you might calculate the energy stored in a spring. Okay, so the energy stored in a spring is equal to the work you've done on it, okay, in stretching it. <coughs> so work is equal to force times distance, right? Now, we've looked at previously in previous videos that if you've got a force distance graph, the area when you're doing a force through a distance would be equal to the work. Well, in this case, the force is changing throughout, but it's still true that that area is still equal to the work done. So you need to think about how to calculate that area. Well, the area of a triangle will be given by a half base times height. So a half, and in this case the base is the extension, and the height would be the force, that will give you the energy or the work done required to stretch the spring, right? Or the energy in the spring. I'm going to give it the same symbol that AQA uses, E, little e, okay? So that will actually calculate the area, sorry, the energy stored in the spring, but it's often given slightly differently. E, E is equal to a half, E, and what people sometimes do is they, or what's on the syllabus anyway, is that they've taken the uh, equation for force and sub this chunk in for that force. Okay, so you get Ke, or to simplify, a half Ke squared, because you've got the E times the E. Okay, so that's another equation. So just to summarize, work is force times distance. <coughs> uh, the force uh, on a spring can be given by this equation. Okay, the distance is also the same as the extension, right? So when we just put all this together, you get this equation for energy stored in spring. I hope you found this easy to understand. If you have any comments, please make them. Thanks for watching.